Hi guys, today's Laserdisc is the 1982 Ron Howard film, Night Shift. It stars Henley Winkler, Michael Keaton, and Shelley Long. Henley Winkler's character Chuck gives up the high-pressure Wall Street a financial analyst and stockbroker and yearns for a more quiet life, ends up working at the city morgue, and ends up with a very steady girlfriend who relationship problems are, are building at this point in his life. She has all these really odd neurotic tendencies and this obsession with her weight and you can very clearly see from the beginning, uh, just even within the opening few minutes, that it's one of those obvious, he's gonna f burst out of his shell and realize this really isn't the relationship for him and he's gonna fall in love with someone new and exciting, something's gonna happen and it's revealed very quickly that it's one of those guy falls in love with the beautiful, overly nice, and wonderful prostitute. And it's something that's a, a common theme throughout films, as long as we've had films, but particularly in the 80s, there's a lot of comedies along those lines. Uh, one that comes to mind just immediately is something like Trading Places, but there's a lot more, uh, even like Pretty Woman getting into early 90s, that type of thing. Uh, it's a very common theme in romantic comedies. And this was done fairly well with Shelley Long playing Belinda, who is his neighbor. He finds out very early on in the film after her pimp is taken to the morgue, and he meets her officially for the first time. Things take another turn when, thanks to nepotism, Chuck, uh, Henry, Henry Winkler's character, is moved to the night shift and he gets a new partner, a new trainee, in the form of Michael Keaton, Bill, and that these are the two real standout performances, I think, in this one, and that's what really what brings this movie, it's, its heart and its quality, are the, the main trio here. You have Shelley Long, uh, Henry Winkler, and uh, Michael Keaton, I think the three of them really or what elevate this film because there are some weaker points to talk about a little bit later on uh, but they do a great job um, Henry Winkler I was very surprised by because I really only know him from Happy Days I know he's been in other stuff now done other things with his career but he's not someone who ever uh, followed or saw too much of him outside of Happy Days and always is a very different character from the Fonz he's uh, again also has some slightly neurotic tendencies and he's very much tries to be just this this nice humble guy and really tries to be very straight laced uh, to a fault almost and in a way almost holds him back and he does a very good job it's a role that I actually think as good of a job as he did I would have really liked to have seen uh, Gene Wilder in this role I think he pulls off an almost Gene Wilder-esque role in this and that performance I'm, I'm saying that as a positive for Henry, uh, Henry Winkler I'm very uh, surprised actually uh, and not being too familiar with his work outside of the Fonz to see him pull off a role that reminded me in many ways of a Gene Wilder performance that's a really great compliment and um, again you know as much as I would have liked to have seen Gene in that role maybe to uh, see how the picture would have turned out did he did a great job uh, I do think the best performance though was Michael Keaton in this by far he plays Bill, who um, is this this crazy idea man. He's one of those people where he has a tape recorder that records all these crazy ideas, like feeding uh, mayonnaise to the fish uh, ahead of time to make uh, um, tuna fish uh, sandwiches and all these other cr different crazy ideas, microwave uh, clothing so you can cook a baked potato and keep warm at the same time, and all these crazy ideas. Um, but he's a very driven, passionate person and you really feel that even though his, a lot of his ideas are dead ends and he really doesn't even, he comes up with all these creative ideas and never really follows through, when he does you really, you feel that zest for life that he has and it's it's sort of the, it's the total opposite, they're great parallels to each other and they're, they're great foils, these two characters and they work off each other very well and in some ways they kind of balance each other and one character needs to be taken out of that shell a little bit and really learn to loosen up and the other one needs to tone down and come a little bit more to reality for them both to really function and they bounce off each other pretty well and you get some some good tension between them as well a good friendship and it really all comes together too oh, with Shelley Long's character Belinda his neighbor there's a good romance that again every little step of the way in this film is very, very, some in some ways by the numbers, in some ways it's like, okay, it's so obvious, you know exactly where the entire movie is going to go. You know, every story beat within 20 minutes of this movie, you know, the whole rest of the movie is going to be. But it's not to say it's, that's always a negative thing. Sometimes, you know, a predictable story doesn't necessarily mean a bad story in the context of um, how it's portrayed and what the, the actual... Um, relationships with the characters are and it doesn't affect the comedy at all it's just one of those things where it, it doesn't really bring any crazy surprises but doesn't really need to in many ways I don't think I think it functions well with, without that um, even in its predictability and that romance that they start uh, if 
comes off mostly believable throughout the picture. The one thing that I have a little bit of an issue with towards the end is it gets a little bit too much of a forced happy ending. I liked it, but at the same time it feels very Hollywood happy ending that maybe could have been something a little bit different. It wasn't pulled off quite the, as well as I would have liked it to, but not bad by any means. Um, Things get really nuts when they decide that they're working this night shift at the morgue and they have all this free time and there's no supervisors or anything like that. They end up going into business um, for themselves as pimps and they get Belinda and all the prostitutes that she knows to work under them and they uh, give them a better working relationship and a better life and a larger chunk of the profits and that type of thing. And, and it turns out to be this, this scheme that blows up in their face eventually. Uh, and all these like crazy shenanigans and scenes go on and, but it works really well because the performances are so great and there is a genuine heart to it even though again it is um, very goofball very predictable it really just you still feel for the characters and you enjoy the performances and the uh, the evolution of the different relationships throughout the film really work well um, it, again it's a, a very good picture the parts that are a little bit weak um, aside from by having a little bit of an issue with the ending, and again, that's more just, I think it could have been pulled off a little bit better, not that it was a bad ending, just that it was, wasn't was quite where I wanted it to go. Uh, the other thing is that it is a very early Ron Howard film, and you can very much tell that. Uh, there's nothing particularly poor about the directing, but it's lacking any real distinctive style. I think the, the actual um, actors' portrayals of the characters have a very great uh, style, and you really feel the actors themselves putting something of themselves in those roles, but I think the directing feels very straightforward and it doesn't feel like um, Ron Howard is quite into his groove yet. There's a, you can usually when you watch a picture with certain directors, it's more obvious than other than others. Like uh, you're not going, you're going to be able to tell a lot of times, say a Spielberg movie or like a Wong Kar Wai. Um, certain directors that have certain style um, and others that are a little more straightforward. But here it's like that style is not quite developed yet and it feels very, uh, again, just well directed, um, adequately directed, but there's nothing exceptional about the direction. And I do think that the film could have used a little bit tighter editing. There are moments where certain scenes, they don't go on too long time-wise. They never feel like they truly drag, but I feel like certain scenes could have been tweaked and slightly shortened to have a little more poignancy. I think certain scenes could have had a little bit more of an emotional impact. Certain comedic lines could have come off better in certain scenes if there was slightly better editing in certain parts here and there. But again, it's, it's the same thing with the, the directing where it's just nothing out there exceptional, but there's really nothing that takes away from the movie. It just isn't quite where it could have been. It's one of those that it falls a little short of being a true um, 80s comedy classic. It's going to be remembered for the ages, but it's still a, a great 80s movie. It's a lot of fun. has some surprisingly good performances in here. So definitely one worth checking out. Again, it's not something in that um, I feel like it's been largely forgotten. It's not one of those um, 80s classics that you think of. It's not even of the level of uh, the second tier down, like the you know Adventures in Babysitting or something. So it's definitely not up there with like you know, 16 Candles, Pretty in Pink, The Goonies, whatever. It's sort of that third tier down where it's if you really like the 80s and you remember the 80s and you like sort of a fun comedy like this, you're really, really going to enjoy it. So um, an imperfect film, but a film that was just like a nudge off of being a true 80s classic and is still a heck of a lot of fun. And again, some surprising performances, especially for me and a, you know a decent early Ron Howard film that I think really pulls off uh, just a, sort of a fun adventure and a good hour and a half or so of your time.